Well, if you've ever been down and out, you know that maybe what hits the spot or what's needed most is a word of hope, a credible word of hope. Hey, everybody, welcome to SAC's online worship experience. So excited you're with us today. If you're new, if it's your first time, we want to welcome you. You're in the right spot, and today we continue our Advent message series called Adventus. We are exploring the prophet Isaiah chapter 40 today. It's going to be a powerful time of prayer, worship, time in God's word. So let's get ready to do it, everybody. Lord Jesus, light of the world, John told the people to prepare for you we're very near As Christmas grows closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome you now. So here I am 
A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All the people are grass, Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear, says the cities of Judah. Here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and His arm rules for them. Him, His reward is with Him, and His recompense before Him. He will feed His flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Well, hey, everybody. Every generation faces the difficulty of navigating the calamities of world events, wars, pandemics, natural disasters, economic highs and lows. Sometimes these events feel out there because we're not directly impacted. And sometimes these events are very much right here or in here because they do impact us directly. Whether direct or indirect, we experience them, we process them, we're exposed to everything. We pray, we get frustrated. Sometimes we cry out and lament and try to make sense of it all. We share grief with others and even outrage. We register our sins and responsibilities, our own corporate or institutional shortcomings. And because we live in a hyper-connected world, events happening anywhere at any time become a lifetime experience for us all. Of course, this can be pretty overwhelming if we're honest. And these are just the events and calamities in the world at large. We also experience our own personal challenges and calamities, seasons of trial and hardship, of struggle and of loss, and our own personal sins and culpabilities, our version of the wilderness. When we're in this kind of place, we feel like we're standing among ruins. And what's so often we feel like we need more than anything is a credible word of hope. If you're a parent and you bring a word of discipline or judgment to your child, you know how important it is to also bring a word of hope and restoration to them. In the life of God's dealings with Israel, we see this over and over and over again. The story of Israel is the story of a people called to live in covenant with Yahweh, to be a representative people bearing witness to the grace and truth of Yahweh, the Lord of heaven and earth. Israel is not only a representative people who reflect what it means to walk with God, Israel is also a representative people who struggle to walk with God, just like me and you. The prophet Isaiah chronicles one of the darkest periods of Israel's history when through their own disobedience brought upon themselves the judgment of exile, being displaced and carried away from their land being carried away from their way of life and from the temple where the patterns of worship formed the rhythms of their identity as God's people. 
The Babylonian exile challenged Israel's identity and pushed them almost to the brink of extinction. Perhaps not since the days of Noah had things felt more bleak. The flickering flame of redeeming hope can often feel in peril based on our circumstances, even when we have created those circumstances through our own disobedience and rebellion, which is why Advent is such an important concept. It's the reality of but God, but God arrives, but God comes, but God shows up, which is really a function of God's covenant faithfulness of his character. Israel is God's chosen covenant people. Of course, all creation is in covenant, generally speaking, but in God's redeeming story in scripture, Israel is his covenant people that he is establishing so that the nations of the world may also become a part of his great family. It's a grand plan, which means that Israel's directly responsible. Blessings for obedience and trust and curses for disobedience and rebellion. Hence Israel's decline and exile. They can't seem to live up to their end of things, which would be pretty hopeless except God, but God. His loyalty never wavers and though he justly punishes our sins, He will not let his people go, which is the context we find ourselves in Isaiah 40. An Advent word of hope emerges from the darkest of circumstances, from the lowest point of Israel's journey. Comfort, comfort my people, says our God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. In other words, but God. Verses three through five are very familiar because we hear them in each of the four gospel accounts in the New Testament in reference to the forerunner to Jesus's ministry, John the baptizer, quote, a voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places become a plain, close quote. We also get some of these words in the last of the Old Testament prophetic books in the canon of scripture, the prophet Malachi. In Malachi chapter three, Isaiah's words have both a particular context and an eschatological or last days application. In the immediate, these words from the prophet come to pass and the exiles return from captivity in Babylon back to Jerusalem the way being smoothed by the Persian king Cyrus. But Isaiah paints a breathtaking picture as well as a once for all salvation to come, which makes this passage applicable beyond its immediate context. Verse five verifies this when the prophet declares, quote, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken, close quote. See, God tips his hand there. God shows his passion and his desire for the whole world. All flesh will see it, he says. It means that his salvation starts with Israel, but it ends with all creation. Rough highways, crooked paths, and deep valleys. Images all humanity can relate to, realities we all experience, sometimes through our own sin and sometimes by the collateral damage of the broken world that we're all a part of. Advent means that God comes to smooth them and straighten them and raise them. Advent means that the gospel emerges from the most desperate and difficult of circumstances. When Isaiah writes, what shall I cry? Later in this passage, all flesh is grass and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. When he says this, he juxtaposes our weakness and frailty to God's strength and glory. The credible word of God finally penetrates our hearts when we see ourselves as the frail, vulnerable people that we are. In the New Testament, when the forerunner, John the Baptist finally arrives after a period of nearly four centuries after the prophet Malachi, this is known as the intertestamental period. John the Baptist becomes the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. He is and has become the broader fulfillment of Isaiah 40's wilderness voice. His message is simple, repent. 
which complements Isaiah's call to remember that all flesh is like grass and to turn to the Lord because the word of the Lord endures forever. John the Baptist is preparing Israel and the world for the ministry of the once for all Redeemer, Jesus. John is pointing everyone to the one who will fulfill Isaiah's words in verses 9 through 11. It says, Go on up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and His arm rules for Him. Behold, His reward is with Him and His recompense before Him. He will tend His flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in His arms. He will carry them in His bosom and gently lead those that are with young. Close quote. It's the ministry of John the Baptist and the arrival of Jesus, the Son of God, that brings Isaiah's words into even greater fulfillment. It shouldn't be lost on us that Jesus' arrival comes with a comforting, angelic word to a group of unsuspecting, no-name shepherds who get to gaze into the infant eyes of Israel's true shepherd and the world's true shepherd king, Jesus. God's credible word, the only word that lasts forever. The only word that could be trusted has been incarnated in human flesh. The word dwells among us. We see Jesus, the light of the world. We see Jesus who served us, who loved us, who taught us, who showed us, who listened to us and called us, gathered us up, bled for us and died for us. We see Jesus who rose from the grave and ascended to the Father's right hand. We see Jesus who promised to return, to bring the fullness of His kingdom forever. In the words of the great hymn, Lo, how a rose e'er blooming, Isaiah, t'was foretold it, the rose I have in mind. With Mary we behold it, the virgin mother kind. To show God's love aright, she bore to men a Savior when half gone was the night. Close quote. It's the writer of Hebrews who captured the essence of the incarnation and the fulfillment of, the, of this prophetic word so well. In Hebrews 1 verse 1, Long ago at many times and in many ways God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days He has spoken to us by His Son. Close quote. See, where there, wherever there's chaos or emptiness, confusion, heartbreak, wherever there's a longing for a credible word of hope, it's right here. It's Jesus Christ. The prophetic word made more certain the fulfillment of Isaiah 40 and every other biblical prophecy and the fulfillment of every lonely and broken heart. And if that's you today, find comfort, find forgiveness, find peace and joy in Jesus who loves you and gave himself for you. And yet much like Israel, the church stands between these two great advents which means, like Israel, we too are waiting for His appearing. And yet on this side of the cross, we have much more than Israel had. The Christ, our light, has come. His Spirit lives inside of us. And our call is to wait in hope and in expectation and faith, which means we might take our cue from Isaiah and from John the Baptist because the world needs a voice that will cry out with a credible hope because... The light is dawn. There are still people and places that remain in darkness. This is the call of Christ's people who live between the advents, proclaim the good news of the gospel, to proclaim the word of comfort for His people that through Jesus all is forgiven. There is a word of pardon, joy, and peace to be a voice in the wilderness, which is what a broken world is desperately seeking. A neighbor, a co-worker, a friend, a community, and it's a word we must boldly proclaim as the people of God. Here, Isaiah again, go on up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Jer Judah, behold your God. As an Advent people, we're both the recipients of this life-giving word and the ones through whom God will share that very word with the world. So let's ask the Holy Spirit to use us, to work through us. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to use us as we proclaim to the world, let every heart prepare 
him room and heaven and nature sing and heaven and nature sing joy to the world the lord is come thanks be to god amen Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. 
delivered me from my fears. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from my fears. I'm not scared here. I'm not scared. Thank you so much for being a part of our online worship experience today from wherever you're connecting, whenever you're connecting with this. We're so excited you're with us. And our prayer for you is simple, the love of Christ over your life, especially this Advent and Christmas season. And if this service has been a blessing to you, we want to encourage you and invite you to become a digital missionary with us. Share this service link with a friend, colleague, coworker, neighbor, family member, somebody that you know who could use encouragement today. We really do appreciate that. And if you're in the Wilmington area, we want to invite you to join us for in-person worship. We gather each and every Sunday, 8.30, 10 a.m. Kids ministry going strong all morning long. There's something for everybody, every age and stage of life here at St. John's. You can learn more about a visit with us. Just go to our website, click Sundays and plan your visit. We look forward to meeting you in person and so many other ways to connect, discover, and grow in your relationship with God uh, here with us at St. John's, both online and in person. We encourage you again, just go to our website, click the event hub calendar to find the many different ways that you can connect with us through the course of this Christmas season. And again, we look forward to uh, meeting you very, very soon. So we appreciate that. And we also want to say uh, a big thank you for you, for your partnership with us. It's time, treasure, talent. It all comes together in the body of Christ so that we can make a difference in the lives of others for the sake of the gospel. And it's our passion here at St. John's to be a lighthouse to our community and beyond. Our vision is unchanging good news for all and partnership together makes that happen. We want to encourage you. We want to invite you to become a sustaining financial giver with us. You can learn more about giving. Just go to our, our website, click the giving button, and that will give you lots of information about how you can give securely and safely uh, here with us at St. John's. We really do appreciate that. Gifts, large and small, they all add up to help us continue the mission and vision of this ministry and we're so grateful for that. May the Lord build in us, me and you, hearts of generosity as we respond to the deep, deep love of Christ. God bless you today. And now, we give you thanks. Because when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed long ago and opened for us the way of salvation. So now we watch for the day. 
knowing that the salvation promised us will be ours when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. Amen. Well, what an amazing passage of scripture in Isaiah 40. And today we give thanks for the voices that have cried out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, the voice of the prophet Isaiah himself, the voice of John the baptizer, the forerunner to Jesus' ministry itself. And we challenge ourselves in the church as members of the body of Christ who are also called not only to be recipients of the message of Christ, but to be a voice saying to the world around us, prepare the way of the Lord, pointing to the one credible voice in our world whose name is Jesus. I know I'll take that into prayer consideration this week. I'm sure you will as well. And we want to stay connected with you. You can find us anywhere and everywhere on social media at S-A-C-I-L-M. Hope you'll connect with us there and stay connected with us moving forward. And as you go today, friends, remember that Jesus loves you. And don't forget, life is short. We don't have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So let us be swift to love and make haste to be kind. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Until next time, everybody.